Good afternoon. Uh, I'm actually recording this on uh, Wednesday afternoon. Uh, I'll post it on, at noon on Thursday. Uh, but I want to welcome you uh, to uh, day, what are we on? We are on day 32, Lenten day 32. Uh, this is actually devotion 31. Uh, yesterday, uh, we read uh, a text uh, called the Pharisees uh, test Jesus. It is from Matthew 22, verses 15 through 22. Um, and this is, this is the story of the Pharisees and uh, some of the Herodians, uh, some of the followers of uh, King Herod, uh, who, who would have been um, very much supportive of the Roman government. Uh, Herod was in power uh, at the... Uh, uh, at the will of the Romans. Uh, if, if the Romans wanted him out, he would be out. So uh, they were very much protective of uh, the, the Romans and uh, Roman sensibilities. And uh, the Pharisees uh, come to Jesus to ask him questions, or this at least this one question, um, because they want to uh, see if he will say something that will implicate um, himself, that he'll implicate himself in uh, something negative, say that he'll say something negative about Rome or about the emperor. And um, so, so this is where they come and, and they sort of butter him up. Uh, Teacher, uh, we know that you're sincere. You teach the way of God in accordance with truth. So, you know, we know you're a straight shooter and you show deference to no one. So you don't pull any punches, right? You don't pull any punches. Um, for you do not regard people with partiality. You, you treat everyone equal. Tell us then what you think. And now, so here's the sort of the, the trick question. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? Um, and, and I think that they believed that Jesus would say that no, it wasn't um, legal or uh, let's see, how, what's the it, lawful? Uh, to pay, to, according to Jewish law, that it would not be lawful uh, to pay taxes. Um, but Jesus sort of um, uses a, a little bit of, of uh, smartness here. And, and, and to begin with, before he even answers, uh, he is aware of their malice. He, he, this is one thing we recognize about Jesus is that he is very perceptive about others. And, and maybe it's the divine nature of, of Jesus that is able to read their thoughts, we don't know, or if he simply is so perceptive, he sees right through uh, all the things that they're saying. Um, but he, he says, um, why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Uh, and so he is uh, not, um, uh, not at all uh, supportive of them, and he recognizes the hypocrisy of their statements about you're such a great teacher and, and you teach truth and, and all of those things, that was all hypocrisy and he recognized it. Um, and then he says, uh, uh, show me the coin used for the tax. Now, this is, is important because, um, of course, you could not use, you couldn't use a, uh, a Jewish coin, you couldn't use a shekel to pay taxes to the Romans. You had to use uh, uh, a denarii, I think is what it's called. Um, yeah, a, denar a denarius. Uh, so you had to use a Roman coin. And so Jesus takes, they, they give him the Roman coin and, and he says, so who's, whose head is on this coin? Who, who's head? And, and the head would be the emperor. That's whose head would have been on the coin. And I, I don't know, I'm not sure who the emperor was at that point. Um, and, and they also say in whose title. And, and so it is the head, it would be the head of say um, uh, Augustus or, or whoever. And it would say Emperor Augustus, right? Would be what it would say. And uh, so they answer him, the emperors. And then he says, therefore give to the emperor the things that are the emperors, i.e. his coins, you can give him his coins, his things that are his, 
which we would we could interpret that to mean his taxes uh, uh, to the emperor and to God the things that are God's. So give to the emperor or the state that which is due to state. Give to God what is due to God. Um, when they heard this, they're amazed. They left him and went away. Now, um, I think that this is a very, very relevant text right now. Um, because uh, I believe that, that we in the Christian church over uh, probably maybe quite a, quite a number of years uh, have uh, become very, very involved in politics. Um, and, and I don't mean, um, I, I don't mean in a, in a, you know, there, there, there's, there is a being involved in politics in a way that is to benefit um, uh, the poor, let's say, uh, being involved advocating for help for the poor. Um, and that's a one, that's one thing. But, but we also sometimes become too enmeshed in, in political government stuff. Um, a few days ago, I saw a picture, a photograph on, on Facebook, and it was a photograph of Jesus, uh, or, you know, person who's supposed to be, and it's not a photograph, it's a drawing or a painting of Jesus basically hugging an American flag. Um, and, and I really found that offensive. Um, uh, not and, and, and not because it was uh, an American flag. Um, I would find it offensive if it was a uh, an Italian flag, uh, a German flag, uh, a French flag, a Mexican flag, a Canadian flag, any flag from any country. Um, Jesus is not an American. He was not an American. Uh, he was not a Roman. Uh, he was not a Roman citizen. Uh, he lived in a Roman, Roman province, um, and you know, I don't even know what citizenship he would have been considered to have, um, but he's not, uh, he's not American, um, he's not a Democrat, he's not a Republican, he's not an Independent, um, and, and I think, too, sometimes we want to, we want to, uh, portray Jesus as supporting whatever it is that we think politically should happen. That, that uh, you know, that, that Jesus is behind us for whatever it is that is political, and therefore that means that, it, that it's right. Um, and, and I think that that's, that's wrong. That, that is, that is, mixing that that which is God with that which is the emperors. Um, and and uh, I, I truly believe that um, that we are called to, to keep the two separate. Uh, it, it's, it's one thing it's one thing to advocate for uh, issues. Uh, for example, uh, uh, you know, like I said, if you if you feel like um, uh, how we treat, say, the homeless or the poor, um, you know, you can go to you can go to Matthew twenty five and, and point to what Jesus says about how we are called to treat the the those who are hungry and thirsty and have no clothing and all those things. Right? That's that's Christian. Um, but if you begin to attack specific policies um, that are, say, you're a Democrat and they're a Republican, and you, you attack them in that regard and think, well, that because Jesus says we're supposed to be doing this, that means Jesus is behind what I'm saying. That's wrong. Um, uh, I think that if you, you know, and, and to, to use the other extreme, uh, I think that if you are, um, uh, if you are anti-abortion, if you are pro-life, let's say, um, 
and you you use scripture and you argue you know you argue that god you know sees this as something wrong uh i think that's that's one thing uh but to to say that uh god you know i i, I don't know I, i'm not sure how we keep those two separate those things separate sometimes but i think we are called to do so um and and, and um because and I think one thing is is that we're called then to speak for God or for Christ, recognizing without recognizing that we don't have really the the right or the the ability to do that. Uh, uh, God did not leave us that right, and um, uh, you know I, I think that we just need to be very careful about how much we try to intertwine politics and faith. Um, I, I don't know if you've, if you've ever noticed in, uh, in reading, in your reading of the New Testament, uh, and, and I'm talking gospels, let's, I want to talk gospels, uh, predominantly, um, you never see Jesus mention the Romans. Never. I mean, from what I, from what I can remember, I mean, other than maybe right here, and, and then once he, once he is arrested and is being, He's dealing with Pontius Pilate. That may be different, but but you don't you don't hear him uh, you don't hear him talking about Roman policy. You don't hear him talking putting down the Roman government. You don't hear any reference to political stuff. Uh, Jesus is about what he can do uh, through his, his through miraculous power, but also through the power of love. Um, and, you know, the, the disciples, most people think that the disciples actually were waiting on him to become political. Uh, the zealots uh, were a, a group that wanted, they were looking for a Messiah that would be a zealot and would become, would be anti-Roman and would raise up an army and, and expel the Romans. And that wasn't Jesus. He did not do that. He did not stop uh, the, the, the crucifixion of, of prisoners. Even though he could have, he didn't, because that would be a political thing. Uh, and instead, he goes to the cross himself. Um, uh, in my mind, the way the way I interpret this is um, is to for us to make sure that we know what we believe about issues. Uh, and and I would I would challenge us to make sure always that we are being as faithful. To the word of God as we can be. I mean, be faithful, right? But at the same time, I would say, make sure if you're, you know, being faithful to the word of God, make sure you're also being faithful to whatever the issue is that you're dealing with. Make sure you know the details. Don't just, don't, don't be very careful of blanket statements and, and things that, you, you know, you, without knowing specifics. Um, but but you can be involved and, and advocate for issues the way Jesus did without it becoming super political. Um, and so that's what I would challenge you to do is to be um, be be Christ like, uh, you know, Jesus, Jesus believed that, that we change things through love. Uh, you, you never see Jesus. You don't see Jesus leading an uprising of people in, a, in, in violence. Um, when, when, I mean, you could say clearing the temple was a little bit, but when Peter pulls the sword in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus, Jesus doesn't have any of that. I mean, he's not about violent protest and, and uprising. He's about a gospel and a message of love. And, and we can do that too. We can advocate for things that we believe strongly and do it in a sense of love the way Jesus did without it becoming overly political, overly partisan, overly uh, hurtful uh, and, and, and um, uh, a way that, that, that turns people off. Uh, you know, our, our, our goal uh, to be as, as people who are trying to be Christ-like is to draw people in through Christ's love and to demonstrate his love to others, even in the way we treat people we disagree with. And, and that's what I would challenge you to do with today's text. Let's, uh, let's have a word of prayer. Holy God, we know that this issue is, 
a big issue right now in our country. Uh, it is a big part of what is uh, dividing us and what is uh, a, big, a big part of, of what we need to do uh, to, uh, to get our, our my, in, in my mind, ourselves and uh, our churches sometimes back on the right track. Um, it doesn't mean we don't advocate for things that, that are important. We do. Uh, but we can do it in a way that is not political, uh, that is issue-oriented and not political-oriented. And so help us, oh God, to do that. Uh, help us uh, to, to uh, deal with others, especially those that don't share our views. Uh, help us to deal with them uh, in a way that is, is, uh, invokes love and kindness uh, because that's what Christ was about. Um, we thank you, oh God, for your holy word. Thank you for the gospel, the story of of Jesus and his life and death and resurrection. Um, as we look at his scripture again today, uh, as we read our new text, pray that you would send your spirit to be within us, uh, guide and direct us, open our eyes, ears, heart, uh, soul, uh, everything that is our very being, uh, that we may hear you say to us today what we need to hear, that we might be transformed into the image of Christ. For it's in his holy name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading for today uh, is um, the parable of the ten virgins. Uh, it is in Matthew chapter 25, so a few chapters over. Um, and it is verses, we're going to read verses 1 through 13. Uh, so here... Uh, Hear the word of the Lord, and this is a this is a kingdom parable. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout, look, here is the bridegroom, come to meet him. All those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, no, there's not, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came. Those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Um, and, and I call that the 10 virgins. It's also the 10 bridesmaids. Uh, but this is the gospel of the Lord. Uh, I encourage you to go back and reread this in a different uh, translation. Uh, pray about it. Uh, meditate on it. Contemplate on it. Um, how does it speak to you as uh, uh, a follower of Christ? Um, and... and how can you be, uh, if you as a follower of Christ, uh, when you get something out of this, what, does it get, what do you get out of it that makes you more Christ-like? Uh, what is it that, that you get out of it that will help you be transformed more and more into the image of Christ? Because that's really what we're about. I uh, pray you have a blessed day. Uh, like I said, I'll be in uh, Ada uh, today, all day today. And... Uh, uh, I just pray you have a great day. Amen. Yeah.